The Aspley War, a proud history, brought to you by the Aspley Strategy Group. Our interviewer asked MP for Nottingham North, Graham Allen, his thoughts on the Aspley Estates. I've been around Aspley a long time. I love Aspley and it's where I'm born and bred. And um, I suppose one of the early memories for me is Melbourne Park, because I used to go up to Melbourne Park and uh, do the scoring for Melbourne Cricket Club. And then they decided, well, we'll let the young lad have a bit of a game and great times and uh, I'd love that to come back to Melbourne Park as well. I think there's a lot of potential there. But I've uh, always enjoyed living around here and it's just the greatest honour for a local lad to be able to be uh, the Member of Parliament and stand up in Parliament and fight for what we want in, in Aspley and the rest of Nottingham North. So it's uh, one of the things I'm very, very proud of. I wasn't always um, a meteoric rise, let me put it that way. I wasn't exactly uh, one of the best lads at school but um, the, the, that stood me in good stead and had to fight my way up a little bit more. And you know, there's a lot of people in Aspley who's going to have to do exactly the same as I did. And uh, maybe they think, well, if that bloke can become Member of Parliament, maybe I can do what I want to do. And there's that potential here. I mean, the growth that we could have on the estate, the strength that's on the estate is fantastic. You've got new people coming in. Perhaps they're not uh, people who've been around on Aspley a long, long time. But they're people who've been taken to the heart of Aspley. They're people who've got a contribution to make. And I think the sky's the limit. If we can get people working together in Aspley, if we can get the resources that we deserve uh, on the estate, there's no reason whatsoever why those people and their youngsters can't achieve whatever they put their minds to achieving. I think regeneration is a state of mind. And I think if we get everybody working together, the local community, Astro that's done such a fantastic job here, the local uh, council, central government putting money into education, into job creation, into policing. If we get all those people together, and Astro's doing a great job in pulling them together, then I think the ambition that we have, really, the sky should be the limit. There's nothing that should stand in the way of achieving what they want to achieve on Aspley Estate. We start our boundaries tour of the Aspley and Bells Lane estates on Aspley Lane, which in ancient times connected Brostow Hall with Aspley Hall, two large landowners' dwellings where Nottingham was a small hamlet. Both developed over the centuries into grand houses with substantial land and farms. Our first junction is at Melbourne and Robins Wood Roads, with the Aspley Methodist Church on the corner. The estate is to our right, while on the left are the retail shops, built to meet the requirements of the estate's residents. Aspley Lane, now with fully matured trees and shrubs, is the southern boundary of the estates and has a diverse range of house styles as it meets Beechdale Road, Broxdale Lane and Strelly, Rhode Island, where again a wide variety of shops and services catering to the needs of the local community are ideally situated. Turning right along Broxtow Lane with Aspley Estate to our right, further shops and the cocked hat come into view, both valued by local residents. Broxtow Lane is the northwest boundary of the estate, and more shops are passed as we arrive at the Broxtow Lane and Bells Lane Island, at the top of the biggest slope on the estates. With Rosslyn Drive to our right, we take a left turn onto Eltham Drive and a long right-hand sweep brings Eltham Drive onto Ainsbury Circus. From here, the first left puts us onto Tilbury Rise, which drops down towards the bottom of Bells Lane at the Tilbury intersection. It's left onto Bells Lane where, after the shops, Cinder Hill Island comes into view. The island on the A610 has to the left the M1 motorway, the head takes you towards Bullwell, and we take a right, which is Nottle Road, the estate's northeast boundary. Most of the private housing built within the estates is along Nottle Road, continually widened and improved to accommodate the ever-increasing traffic accessing the M1 motorway. At the bottom of Broxtow Lane is the popular John Barleycorn public house. Then further along Nuttall Road, it's a right turn at the Melbourne Road Junction, framed by the Commodore, the Co-op and the Aspley Library. 
Melbourne Road is the southeast boundary of the estates, leading back towards the Aspley Lane intersection, which completes our boundaries tour. Aspley and Bells Lane estates are a tribute to the far-sighted vision of our forefathers. In the late 1900s and early 20th century, Nottingham had become a very prosperous city, with much of the success due to the expanding lace industry, famed throughout the world for quality and design. Old Nottingham Centre in the early 20th century is still recognisable today. However, the people flooding into Nottingham to meet the ever-increasing demand for lace workers put enormous housing pressure on the Snenton and Meadows districts. The council had to act after facing the appalling and life-threatening conditions many workers and their families had to live in. The housing stock was old and rapidly deteriorating, and the tenants were always on the breadline, with pawn shops on many street corners, helping families eke out a difficult hand-to-mouth existence. There was no health service, which with insanitary conditions meant child mortality and general ill health was a constant worry. Today we cannot believe that within living memory this housing in Snenton was normal for workers in the lace industry. Much of the housing had to be condemned and redeveloped, however the tenants had to be rehoused, so in 1925 the council made the bold decision to develop an ambitious and futuristic new public housing estate out of the city centre on a greenfield site to be known as Aspley. The Gatley family had lived here with their five children for 11 years and could hardly believe their new home on the Aspley estate, far beyond their wildest dreams. The Martin family, with their four children and Gran, who moved from their grimy terraced housing, were thrilled at the planner's clever use of existing mature trees in a greenfield setting. Moved from the tight cobbled streets of central Nottingham to the wide roads and spacious pavements of the new estate, gave the residents a real sense of pride, which showed itself in their enthusiasm towards establishing their first gardens. To build the Aspley estate, the council earmarked a large tract of farmlands to the northwest of the city. Bordered on the south by Aspley Lane, on the northwest by Broxtow Lane, and on the northeast by Nuttall Road. A proposed broad new road between Nuttall Road and Aspley Lane was planned and is now known as Melbourne Road. The land shown here is similar to the terrain the estate was built on. Lord Middleton owned the majority of the land, much of which was worked by tenant farmers and smallholders. Favourite walks through lush meadows and streams went as the Aspley estate developed. The council pursued a vigorous policy of purchasing any land offered for sale within the proposed site area. In 1928, the balance of the required building land was obtained by compulsory purchase orders under the 1925 Housing Act, allowing the council to proceed with their plans for Europe's largest public housing development. Before building commenced, a number of house designs were submitted by potential contractors, 11 of which appear on the estate, however, the majority of dwellings fell to just 8 designs. On the first phase, there were 2,838 Aspley homes and 922 Bells Lane homes. By housing standards of the 20s, even the smallest of the designs were considered to be spacious. For us today, the basic nature of this kitchen looks sparse and utilitarian, but to have hot and cold water, a bath and toilet in the home was heaven to the new residents. A close look at the council's Aspley rent register brings up a number of surprises. Alfred and Olive Butler moved into 18 Harwell Crescent in September 1930 at a weekly rent of six shillings and fourpence being the equivalent of just under 32 pence today, or about the cost of a chocolate bar.
As each section of this mammoth undertaking was completed, eager tenants were moving in at the rate of up to six families a day. Mixed housing styles and landscaped areas made the estates very special and pointed the way to better housing and estate design to other councils. Compulsory house purchases of large parts of Snenton and Narrow Marsh removed the worst of the slum areas, allowing the residents to leave their one tap and toilet shared between four houses and set up new homes offering a brighter and healthier future. Hello, my name is Melvin Hill. My chief interest is local history. I'm very interested in Aspley and the Aspley Hall area. Like a lot of other people, I like to find out what happened here over the last thousand years. Anything recorded in history of Aspley actually dates back to 1103, when Ralph Malaherb um, was granted um, tithes from Aspley to Lenton Priory. All the, all the land that was Broxtow, Aspley, and of course the south side of Aspley Lane belonged to the Willoughby's when it was sold in the 1920s. It was sold off by the um, Lords Middleton, as they were known then, to raise funds maybe to pay for death duties. But all the land was sold off at, by auction, at um, a, ma a massive auction uh, in Trinity Square. And part of the land included Aspley Hall and all the land upon which the estate was built. Aspley Hall had splendid rose gardens and greenhouses. Little is left from the estate, however the original farmhouse and a few workers' cottages that used to be thatched can still be seen, along with the wall to the old garden to the left of Eskdale Drive. The original house dates from medieval times, but today 1, 3 and 5 Speen Drive stands on the site of Aspley Hall, and the hall's driveway, off Aspley Lane, has now been widened, giving access to the Aspley Hall estate. The barn built in the 1600s is gone, replaced by a double garage attached to one of the modern houses. Many trees surrounding the hall were saved and can be seen dominating the gardens of the estate and are best viewed from the top of St Margaret's Church on Aspley Lane. What would George Birkin, notable owner of Aspley Hall and former Mayor of Nottingham, think to the use of his estate today? In the 60s the barn was already derelict and the house had deteriorated to the point of non-recovery and both had to be demolished. Aspley Hall and its history was a loss to the community and a final break with Aspley's medieval past. Terry, this person Hello. here is a friend of yours, I believe. Uh, yes. Uh, that is Ray Clement. Uh, and I understand he had just presented the bouquet to the Lady Mayoress at the opening of the William Crane. And of course, that's uh, William Temple, who uh, was then Archbishop of uh, York. What do you recall of Ray's comments about that day in particular, Terry? Oh, yes. Um, it seems that all the kids were in the open air. There was going to be a big do and uh, dancing, etc., etc. Um, unfortunately, I'm led to believe that uh, William Temple was two hours late arriving. And by the time he did get there, the heavens had opened up and everybody got drenched and all the kids had to be rushed inside. So that photograph is just at the entrance. Um, presumably they're sheltering from the rain. Mm. So it was a bit of a washout really, wasn't it? It was uh, January the 25th, 1937, my first day, and it's the same day as the uh, foundation stone was laid for the Nottingham, for the Aspley Library. And it was a wet Monday morning, and in those days it was on your birthday, what a birthday present, uh, you started school. So I was taken off to school 
and uh, introduced Miss Christopher. Miss Christopher was the um, headmistress of the junior, uh, sorry, of the infant school. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course then I went through the infants into the juniors where Mr. Squires was the headmaster and quite a number of the teachers I remember and uh, then of course I went to uh, the senior department where, where John Deere was headmaster and I then went through until I was 14 because in those days you left school at 14 not 15 as people have been saying and uh, I then became an apprentice electrical engineer and went on from there. In researching this video, we required pictures and first-hand memories of the estates and of their construction in the 20s and 30s. Precious family albums were provided by the ladies of the Aspley Over 60s Club, and we displayed plans of the period along with detailed maps of the area in the 19th century. The memories of Piggy Lane, the Forum and Commodore Cinemas, and the building of Melbourne Road were talked about with enthusiasm. The Over 60s Club is held weekly at the Aspley Library. As the recollections flowed, the ladies talked about their growing up on the estates, and one thing became very evident. They all recalled the happy times they had living on the estates both before and after the war. Laughter was triggered, as it is on such occasions, by the clothes and hairstyles of the different periods covered by the photo albums. In the 1930s, the availability of simple and affordable cameras meant that proud parents could capture their children in the gardens of their new homes, along with pictures of trips to the countryside and the coast. Very exciting for all. Families and groups got together to organise trips to the seaside, such as Skegness, Yarmouth, Inglemells and Blackpool. Great times were had by all, and fond memories captured by these photographs reinforced the view that the council's new estates offered residents a bright future and the escape from the poor housing of their past. Our thanks go to the Aspley Over 60s Club for their help on this project. Whilst at the library, we took the time to talk with Peter Stimson, community librarian. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we don't only have books today. There's all the electronic information, videos, cassettes, spoken word and so on. But essentially, there isn't an awful lot of change, amazingly enough. Most people still use us, mostly, for books. They mostly also use the other facilities while they're here. Um, in particular, uh, there's been a big growth in the amount of information we disseminate through the library. And most of the readers, I would say, use either the videos or the cassettes or the spoken word as well as books. But still, for most of them, a library means books. And in consequence, this is what we most, mostly still have. Although we've got all the others, we've still mostly got books. It is little realised that whilst the majority of the Aspley estate was constructed in the early 30s, a section to the north of Hillcott Drive to Nuttall Road was not completed until much later. The plans were drawn for the final building phase to complete the Aspley estate, and tendering opened in 1938. The main contractor was J.W. Stamp & Co, who tendered for 256 houses and flats at a projected cost of £91,108. At the time, no one was aware that in just over a year, Great Britain would be at war with Germany. The war was to have a major effect on the lives of the estate's residents. Immediately, volunteers were required for the auxiliary fire service, fire wardens, nurses and the home guard. A large part of Melbourne Park was allocated for war allotments of between 275 and 350 square yards in the Dig for Britain campaign. Even the playing fields of the William Crane School were pressed into service by the teachers and pupils. Spare land around Nottingham was also cultivated. The estate's residents rose to the occasion in the production of war-related materials. Additional trolley buses had to be introduced to transport the workers to the factories, such as Raleigh, which was almost completely turned over to war work. 
The Ordnance Factory in the Meadows went into 24-hour production, making a full range of armaments for our forces overseas, and many additional workers were from the Aspley and Bells Lane estates. On Beachdale Road, a voluntary observation corps was set up along with 3.7 anti-aircraft guns. Estate kids enjoyed visiting and playing around the guns. The Beachdale Battery did see action, particularly on the 8th and 9th of May 1941. As the residents ran for cover in the air raid shelters, 95 enemy aircraft launched an attack on the Ordnance Factory and bombs rained down on the Meadows area and central Nottingham, killing 159 and injuring hundreds more. A soldier from Tenbury Crescent, Ted Arnott, wrote to Tom Bryant, the vicar of St. Margaret's Aspley Lane, from his BFPO address, where Ted was a sergeant with the British Expeditionary Forces. Sadly, the next communication was from the War Office, advising that his body would be at Nottingham Station to be collected at 6am on the 20th of February 1942. Towards the end of the war, German prisoners from the Woolerton Park Camp were put to work in and around the estates. The end of hostilities was a big event in Nottingham as tens of thousands flooded the market square in celebration of VE Day, possibly Nottingham's finest hour. House and street parties were held throughout the estates and celebrations went on long into the night. The residents of the Aspley estates, along with the whole of Great Britain, paid a great deal for their freedom and the freedom we enjoy today. In the 50s and 60s, and with the new affluence, many residents upgraded their homes and were able to purchase new luxury items such as televisions. Old fireplaces were replaced for a more modern look. Picture rails were very much in, and by this time all homes had a radio. Residents became very house proud as their income grew and polished bedroom furniture and an eider down were essentials. In the gardens the wartime vegetable plots were replaced by well tended lawns. A glimpse of 40 years ago showed no cars on the estates. Now demolished, the bridge over Nuttall Road which led past Bubbington Colliery is a dual carriageway to the motorway. Also gone the rail bridge over Broxtow Lane by the shops. And opposite the shops, the old wood yard has now been developed for housing. Unfortunately, trolley buses no longer run along Nuttall Road. Whilst the factory at Bobbers Mill and Aspley Lane still look the same, Aspley Lane shows a distinct lack of traffic in the 60s. The shops at Melbourne Road and Aspley Lane look pretty much as they do now. The big changes on the estate started in the 70s and through into the 80s as major employers such as Babington Colliery started closing. The Players Factory on Alfreton Road, also a big employer, closed and big reductions in staffing levels took place at Rally Cycles. On a positive note, in the 80s, the William Crane School celebrated its 50th anniversary, at which time the true spirit of the estate shone through. Many got involved in fancy dress, and the warm sunny day added to this memorable event. Lots of these children have families of their own, and still live on the estates. As a postscript to this video, Plot 360, purchased in 1928, has on it the house this video's editor grew up in. Hello, I'm Councillor Leon Uncher. Um, I've represented this estate for eight years as its local councillor, but I've lived here for over 25 years. I was one of those that helped set up and create Astro. 
Well, if you look back at the photographs of the 1930s when the estate was built, these houses were built to last and they certainly stood the test of time. The estate has changed over the last quarter of a century, but it is people that matter at the end of the day. I was involved with Astro from the start because it was about people wanting to get together to actually see that things could happen. We'd seen it on the Broxtow estate, but we wanted to deliver what we wanted and not be dictated to. And that's how Astro came to be born. Astro's now beginning to actually get together. Um, it's taken time, but there are things that we've delivered on the estate. There are things that are happening on the estate. And um, given the next few years, um, it will be a very important part of what we actually do in Aspley. Aspley has a, a great future. It's already started to make changes. The training centre is here. The sports centre at Roslyn School is about to actually start. It's a fantastic time for people to actually get together and to deliver for the community that they actually live in. Well, you've seen that Aspley has a great past, but it also has a, a great future. But it's about the coming together of people, us. There are people here that will support and we can do it. Um, lots and lots of people will help along the way, but it's people from Aspley that are making their decisions, making it happen for all of us. Our thanks go to all the Aspley residents, without whose help and contribution, the production of this video would not have been possible. The production of this video was funded from the Single Regeneration Budget and the European Regional Development Fund.